Let's discuss Android overlays. Overlays or RRO are one of the most essential techniques for customizing Android. So what exactly is an overlay or RRO? In simple words, a runtime resource overlay or RRO is a package that changes the resource values of a target package. So for now, just imagine it as an APK with only resource files in it. So what can be overlaid by using the RRO technique? So RRO can technically overlay all the resource files like layouts, strings, colors, and other XML resource files. It can also overlay drawables and fonts. So by doing this, you could dynamically change the look and feel of an application or a system UI component. So in this simple example, you could see that a blue Android is changed into a green Android by using the resource overlays. It could be either runtime or static overlays. What cannot be overlaid by RROs? So you cannot overlay any source code. That means the Java or Kotlin source code files cannot be overlaid. So for example, if you consider an application structure, you can overlay whatever coming under the resource folder and whatever coming under the SRC folder, which is the Java and Kotlin classes that cannot be overlaid. So let's have a closer look at the RRO overlay process. So this diagram shows a high level overview of how an application is compiled, executed and overlaid by an RRO. So the top section shows how a normal Android application is converted into an Android APK and executed. And the bottom part shows how an RRO project gets converted into an RRO APK and gets overlaid into the app process. So in case of a normal Android application, we have mainly these files, right? So the Android manifest.xml is one of the core files where we configure a lot of things for the application. And then we have the Java and Kotlin files where we write the business logic and other logics, right? And also we have the resources folder where we ha have all the UI elements like the layouts uh, and other images or um, drawables which we use for the project. The resource folder is the one which we are actually overlaying, right? So when this project is built, it gets converted into an APK. And if you open up an APK, you can see that within that there is the Android manifest.xml. And then we have got the classes.dex file, which is basically the compiled form of Java and Kotlin files. And then we have got the resources.arc file, which is basically a compiled form of the resource files. So during the execution, the app process will make use of the classes.dex and app resources.arc to run the application. So that's how a normal Android application runs. So when there is a RRO in scope, then we have RRO resources.arc and RRO ID map as well within the process. Okay. So RRO resources.arc is nothing but the overlayable resources which is available within the RRO APK. And the RRO ID map is nothing but a table which has a one on one mapping the overlayable resources. Okay, so now let's have a look at the RRO section. So a normal RRO project will consist of only an Android manifest.xml and the resource files. So on compilation or on build process, this will get converted into an RRO APK. And in the RRO APK, there will be the Android manifest.xml and the resources.arc file. So the resources.arc file is nothing but the compiled form of resources file. During the execution process, the app process will pick up this particular resources.arc and will look at the RRO ID map to get a corresponding resource ID for the overlayable resource. And during the runtime, it will basically overlay the app resources.arc with the RRO resource.arc. 
so please note that only the particular resource will get overlaid so for example if you are only overlaying a layout xml then only that particular xml will get overlaid the rest of the resources will be used from app resources.arsc so in short during the runtime the app process will look at the rro id map and gets the right overlayable resource id and overlay that resource on top of the app resource.arsc so that's how an rro overlay process works on a very high level so let's consider a real world application of static and dynamic rros consider an example of mobile manufacturers like samsung motorola or nokia so they could use a static overlay for creating different brands of mobile phones so in this case you can see brand x and brand y are created from a single aosp system image so similarly they could use dynamic rros to create different skins for a system okay so as you could see here on top of brand x and y they could use dynamic rros and create a blue skin and a red skin so here is the difference between static and dynamic rros so static rros are applied at the build time and cannot be deactivated or disabled later whereas dynamic rros are enabled at runtime and it can be programmatically enabled or disabled at a later stage 